You're watching Power Nation. Today on Detroit Muscle, we hit a bullseye with a compact Mopar and rescue it from being a lawn ornament and turn it into a pavement pounder. Today we're rescuing a rare piece of Detroit muscle. We're heading out to find an elusive compact muscle car targeted at guys who couldn't swing spending a lot of scratch, but wanted premium Mopar performance. We set our sights on a 1972 Dodge Dart Swinger. Something cool and nostalgic about an old Mopar sitting in the weeds, isn't there? This one being black is kind of cool. Yeah. It's a factory color. Her exterior has seen better days, but this swinger has the potential to be a heavy hitter. When a car has been sitting out as long as this one has, there's always some surprises when you go to pop the hood. Hey man, look at that. I have to say that looks way better under here than I thought it was. I was not, I was not expecting that. This is the first thing I always like to check. There ain't none in it. It'd be cool if we could just jump this dude off, you know, maybe pour a little gas in the carburetor and fire it up, at least drive it onto the trailer. Mm -hmm. I mean, the winch would go faster. Yeah. What'd be the fun in that? Right. Where's your sense of adventure? I don't know if it's adventure or wisdom. I was anticipating we were gonna have a few more problems, so <laughs> brought like a cap and rotor, fuel filter, some of that stuff just in case. But I really do hope that's all it is. That would be handy. Make for a light day for us. You know the story on this thing at all? I know he bought it roughly eight years ago. The guy initially wanted 3,500 bucks for it and he was able to talk him down to 800. Sound like this should be something we need to buy. <laughs> so far so good. I'm curious. Grab me a set of keys. This is the moment. Cameraman, can you hear me? Zoom on, zoom on him. Dang it, horn oh, don't work. Nada. We're gonna have to clean them cables. Dang it. You better not have brought a mess of bad luck with you. <laughs> Everything else looks good though. Feel like I'm taking a long route with this one. Let's try it again. Dome light on. Negative. Headlights come on. Tell me if headlights come on. Nope. Yeah, I bet it's a battery cable. Seven sixteenths. Golly! Mm. Had to put a little man on that one. Gonna give her a whirl. Yeah. Ugh, gross. Yep, dead as a doornail. Found a piece of wire laying here on the ground. Well, technically it's two pieces of wire. If I can get it apart and splice it back together, you too can make yourself an ignition switch. <laughs> Did you find something? Yeah. Good, we'll use that for the backup. <laughs> if you want to take that big long one, twist it around that positive side of the foil, and I'm gonna find a way to put some gasoline in this thing. Okay. I'm making me a makeshift fuel tank. Basically because I forgot to bring one. So what I'm gonna do is hook a hose to my fuel pump down there, slide a piece of rubber hose into here, snag a hose up there, put a couple zip ties here and there. This thing's gonna be worth at least the amount of gas that bottle's holding. Some may think that little blue thing in there is to keep the cola in the bottle, but in this situation, it's gonna keep the fuel from sloshing out of that bottle. I should patent this right here. Look at that. Boys, thank Dodge meant for it to be this way, because conveniently right there, no need for a zip tie. Well, you wanna drive it? Now you gotta remember, you're gonna have to drive it with the gas pedal and the shifter. <laughs> and there is an ignition switch to cut it off. So trick here is to not park it in the bed of the truck, keep it on the trailer, and if worse come to worse, neutral then park. Woohoo! Come on, old girl. Mm. 
We just run out of gas. I vote winch. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. Takes me back to my wireline days. Comfy. Smells like the 70s in here. It's gonna feel weird, but I need you to keep it that way. Turn it. Straighten up. Did you hit the brakes? I hit the I hit the gear shifter. That's just yeah. Told him we should have winched it. Coming up, we give it fuel, give it fire, and all the stopping power you desire. Well, after getting our old Dodge in here in the shop and doing some investigating work, we come to the conclusion we're going to need several pieces. That's right. We called up our buddies at Rock Auto and ordered a full load of parts that can help us get this old Mopar back on the road. The first thing that we're going to address is the fuel system. Now, out there in the field, I tracked the top off of this thing, and it was green on the inside. So hopefully it'll clean up, and a simple kit installed will do the trick. We're also going to be addressing the fuel system in its entirety, with a new fuel tank, sending unit, flushing out the lines, and even swapping out that pump. Adding a new fuel pump is going to ensure that we're getting adequate gas flow to the engine when we fire that 360 and squeeze out all the ponies she can muster. No expert, but I'd say it's been a minute since that bad boy's been changed, especially in comparison to the new one. I made a mess. Good news is, that's not an obnoxious sound at all. Good shoulder workout, though. Now, getting that old fuel out does a couple of things. One, makes it lighter and easier to drop out. And two, it eliminates a safety hazard. You never want to keep an old fuel tank just laying around your shop. Because as you know, fuel plus fire can equal a bad day. Now, to drop this tank is fairly straightforward. Basically, you got two rubber hoses and a connector attached to the sending unit. And then you got to zip loose two J bolts, and she should come right out. Now we could go through all the work of refurbishing that old tank and sending unit, but Rock Auto offers replacements for both, so we're just gonna make it easy on ourselves and swap them out. Now it wouldn't make much sense to put a new fuel tank in and try and reuse that old cinder especially considering how long that car's been sitting. And what your fuel cinder does, basically you got a little indicator here, and it'll tell you how much fuel you have left in the tank. And it also draws fuel up from the tank into the new pump that we just installed. First up is a little rubber gasket that has to go in between the sending unit and the tank. And this is kind of the difficult part, is feeding this thing through all the canyons and crevices. Sometimes you get lucky like that. Then you just need a ball-peen hammer and a chisel to knock it in. We can go. With a car sitting this long to just assume that the brakes are in working order would just be careless. So we're going to have to address all this stuff. Also, with this thing torn down is a perfect opportunity for you to check the wheel bearings and the spindle. Now you have two places that the bearing rides on this little stuff. And what can happen is you can accumulate excessive wear here on the bottom side. So you need to wipe this off and kind of do a little fingernail test. What you want to see is if there's any kind of snag that your fingernail hits as you go around where the bearing runs. This one has an ever so slight amount, but luckily it looks like we caught it in time. This can be caused from a bad bearing or the bearing preload being inaccurately set. When we took this one off, there was zero tightness to that nut. So 
so I was curious where we were gonna be at. Right now, we're just gonna throw in a new set of bearings and a new seal. That should take care of this just fine. The next hurdle we're gonna be tackling on our driveway rescue is the brake system, and these old drums have definitely seen better days. For starters, our hardware's all rusted out, looks like the shoes are pretty much shot, and we got a leak on our wheel cylinder. So we'll get all this old junk taken off and we'll swap it out for that hardware and brake shoe kit we got from the guys at Rock Auto. A lot of modern mechanics probably haven't seen anything like this. A lot of these levers and springs can be intimidating, but keep your eyes on what goes where, take a few picks, and you'll be good. And once you got your wheel cylinder off, you're good to take your backing plate and sandblast it and paint whatever color your heart desires. At first glance, when you look at our brake shoes, they're almost identical, but if you put them side by side, you can see this one has a lot more surface area, and there's a reason for that. Whenever you go to slam on the brakes, you have more force and momentum going forward, so you need that extra surface area. And that's why this one is your primary and faces towards the front of the vehicle, and this one is your secondary and faces towards the rear. Our Rock Auto drum brakes have more than enough stopping power for this mini Mopar. Just remember, once you get this all put together, you gotta bleed the brakes before you pressurize the system. Much better. Now for me personally, I like to keep my adjustment all the way in and then I'll set my hub on and spin it and adjust it out until I only get one revolution. And that's usually industry standard for most drum brakes. Up next, we take a look back at the swinger that started it all. Now there's no denying that we still got a lot more work to do on our 072 Dart, but if you were to take one of these cars and accompany it with some performance, well, you've had yourself a home run. A car that embodied the 60s in both name and spirit was the 69 Dart Swinger. The Dodge Boys tempted cash-strapped buyers with this mini muscle car that churned out 6,000 RPM for under three grand. For that price tag, you could get anything from a straight six up to a 383 Magnum. But the real muscle came in their iconic 340 package. 2,800 bucks got you all the standard muscle car goodies, like heavy duty suspension, firm ride shocks, and dual chrome tipped exhaust. And you also got a four-speed Hurst shifter pulling a set of 323 gears, giving you full control when you swung into action. Power bulges on the hood let you know that this Dodge was rocking a potent 340 small block V8. It pushed over 275 horses at 5,000 RPM. Now that was less than the 383, but it made up for it by being 90 pounds lighter, making this small car perfectly balanced. Bumblebee Stripes tagged it as a junior member of Dodge's Elite Scat Pack, which included the Super V and the Charger. It could run with the big boys knocking out the quarter mile time in the mid 14s and went zero to 60 in six seconds. The Swinger 340 only came as a two door coupe and had slick options like this black vinyl top roof and exclusive bright red paint. The body style was the same as the 68 Dart with minor changes to the grille and tail lights. On the inside, the car was all business. Bench seats came standard, leaving plenty of room to haul you and all your friends. By today's standards, it's nowhere near a compact. It's only one inch shorter than a Dodge Magnum. Darts also came in a GTS package that was virtually identical to the Swinger, except it had a 440 option, more bling, and a higher price tag. Its main rival was the Chevy Nova SS, which would run you about $300 more for the same amount of performance. Of all the muscle cars that year, this one was by far the best bang for your buck. The Dart ran you about $10 per horsepower, with its smaller size, it flew under the insurance company's muscle car radar, saving you even more green. The car was a hit in its first year with over 16,000 sold, and Dodge continued swinging well into the 70s. The 69 Swinger 340 is still a good bargain today for anyone looking to own and drive a classic piece of Detroit muscle. It's time for a little rock and roll. 
Well, we've pressure washed our dart, and I have to say it turned out a lot better than we were thinking. Yeah, she's no beauty queen, but at least it's not as crusty as it was. We went ahead and removed the wheels all the way around because you could basically see the air inside of the tires. One funny thing about wheels is if they're clean or they're nice, well, they can really elevate the rest of the car. And there's a component like that on the inside that does the same thing. At first glance of our interior, we've got some work to do. And overall, it's not in too bad a shape. Front seat's got a couple tears here. Back seat's actually in really good shape. But this carpet, straight up nasty. And trust me, it smells as bad as it looks. But for now, we're gonna get this old rug tore out of here and swap it with a new one that we got from the guys at Rock Auto. Watch this. I think I need some hand sanitizer. It's not a rat nest, that's a rat hotel. <laughs> As expected, we had a little bit of surface rust here on our floor pans. We're gonna spray on some rust preventative to help slow things down. I may even put in some sound deadening just for good measure. That should do it. We also made sure to do a couple rounds of cleaning on the seats with an extractor to dig out all that nastiness. After we sandblasted, painted, and installed a fresh set of center caps, we topped off our wheels with some new rubber to complete the ensemble. Using a simple trick I learned from a detailer buddy of mine, I scrubbed off years of contaminants from this old swinger's paint job with a clay bar and a few sprays of some ceramic coating. Well guys, I think it's safe to say we've done right by this old Mopar by addressing several issues inside and out and underneath the hood. And it's finally time to stretch it out on the highway for its first test drive. You know what? I think I have the perfect co-pilot in mind who's been dying to see this thing in action. All right, Flamour, I want you to picture for a minute a 50-year-old car. And it's been sitting in the weeds, it's been neglected, it's out in the elements every day and it has a carpet and interior that looks just like that. It takes like a big pile of parts like that we got over there to even get it back on the road. I, I'm kind of scared to be honest with you, but that's, there's only one way to, to go from here and it, it, it's gonna be better. I, I have a good feeling. Okay, well remember that picture because I think what's behind this door just might surprise you. you ready for this? Let's see. Ha <laughs> So this is our 72 Dodge Dart Swinger. What do you think? This is the type of transformation that guys like us look forward to. Oh, absolutely. It has made quite a transformation from what it was just two weeks ago. It's not your car show car, you know, it's, right. it's not super shiny, but the potential is there for sure. This is definitely a DIY car guy project. It is, That's I, I know everything underneath is in shape, I think we should take a look at the engine just to see what that looks like. Yeah, let's pop the hood. You, you gotta see this. What do you think of that? I, I miss cars like this. They're, they're so easy to work on. You can literally sit on the fender and turn wrenches. There's so much room. It's just a cool feeling that this car has another second chance at life. It, uh, it, it's got a great foundation. The, what I love about these types of vehicles is that you, you need those three things, fuel, air, spark, if you have all three of those things, you can figure out how to get these cars running. Now, I know you saw that nasty carpet out front there. But I want oh, you yeah. to take a peek and tell me what you see. This is such an amazing transformation. It's so easy to change the look of the interior of the vehicle. I don't need the hazmat suit anymore either. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna be a joy to drive. If you have a socket set and if you have a screwdriver, these carpets go right in. Yeah. It's great. I think me and Tommy busted it out in a couple hours, and yeah. that was two hours very well spent. Uh, yeah, it totally opinion. changes the look of the vehicle and the smell. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say we take it for a spin? Oh, I'm itching. All right. Let's go. And I got to say, probably out of all the driveway rescues we've done, this has been my favorite so far. This feels like a vehicle that just kind of fell into place. The owner needed help. We were able to give it to him. And relatively simple fixes. Yep. 
these these cars when they were built they were they were built and you guys are rock auto you've been so awesome every time we've done a driveway rescue it's no questions asked this is what we need to get this car back on the road and you guys just send it and we appreciate it the owner appreciates it and it's just always fun doing these driveway rescues that's we're thrilled because these are real cars these are real guys this is what it's about right here when you finally get it to stretch out on the highway yeah. and it's just smooth gliding and you just get to chill for a minute it's it's definitely the best part of the job right this here this is good therapy you just a joy to drive on a road but we've got a beautiful day look at these trees yeah just a little bit of a windy road it's hard to beat ain't it i can i can make a living doing this we call it perks of the job nothing looks like this anymore no and probably will never again no no it's it's a bygone era and it's just being able to get things like this up and running again. There's no reason why you couldn't drive this car every day. Yeah. Cars from this era, this is what they're meant to do. I wouldn't know. No one ever lets me drive.